Today we're going to look at how using a global inbox strategy can greatly increase the flexibility of your test and target deployment. Now, if you're familiar with the standard way of deploying test and target code to your site, you know that you need to identify ahead of time the content that you wish to test. So in our test page here, if we wanted to test this image, we would have to know ahead of time that we want to test the image, specific inbox tags would need to be deployed around that image, and then we could then continue testing uh, per the standard methodology that test and target prescribes. That works great and it's super slick. However, the drawback is, is that if I don't know what I want to test ahead of time, then every time a new test comes up, then I need to make a request to my IT department to deploy new inbox code to the new element I want to test. They're usually great about doing this, however, it usually has to fit within a deployment schedule, so the answer back is usually happy to do it. It's going to be six to eight weeks out, and now my test plans are all thrown out the window. With a global inbox strategy, you can dynamically update any content on the page without having to know it ahead of time. A global inbox is really just an empty inbox that doesn't wrap any specific content. In fact, it doesn't wrap any content. It just sits on the page and waits for a campaign and offer to attach to it. Now the offer is a little bit different than your traditional offers in that it isn't just a raw block of HTML code that you're swapping into your page. It's JavaScript code, jQuery code that is used to dynamically manipulate the page content so that you don't, know how, you don't have to know ahead of time what that content looks like or what that content is. So let's take a look at a quick example here. In this use case, we want to test swapping out this image, which is just a static image for a different image, and we want to add a link to that image. Now, we don't have this wrapped with an inbox, but we do have a global inbox on the page. And let's take a look at what that looks like. So here's my global inbox here. Again, you can see, as I mentioned, it's, it's an empty inbox. It doesn't wrap any content. It's just sitting on the page. And I've called mine TNT Global. And now the requirement is that we test this image on the page of the sushi lunch, which is wrapped in a div ID called inbox test. And it's just a simple image there. Uh, the requirement is, is that we update that image and we add a, a, a link to it. So if we toggle over to our offer, you'll notice that this does look a little bit different from your traditional HTML offers, but it really is pretty straightforward. And once you're comfortable with it, the sky's the limit on what you can do with this. There's, there's a couple main components to this. The first is some inline style. And the reason we do this is, is by hiding the, the default content within the offer, it reduces a flicker. So if we didn't do this, you would see the default content load, you would see your test content load, not the greatest user experience. So we're going to go ahead and hide that default content. Then on the, the document ready state, once the DOM loads, we can come in and then manipulate that content any way we want. So you'll remember from our page that we had a div ID called inbox test, and I'm going to update the HTML uh, property for that div. So I'm going to add in an href to the sushi wiki page, and I'm going to update to a new image. And then finally, we're going to make that div visible again. So again, we, we hid that earlier on to hide the default content. We updated to our test content, and now we're going to make that visible. Let's go back to our test page and take a look at how that, how that works. You'll notice up here that I'm using a couple parameters. I'm a huge proponent of using query string parameters when developing and testing your content within Test and Target. It makes it super easy to test, get into a specific campaign or a specific experience. Um, it's just a really slick way to be able to, to test your content. So we are in our test. We are viewing the control version. And we want to go ahead and look at how the test is displayed. So I'm going to change this to test, which is my target uh, within my campaign setup. And you'll notice a couple things. One, the image is going to swap to a new image. We're not going to have a flicker and we're going to have a link around that image. So go ahead and load the page. We now have our new image. The image now has a link on it and it links over to the sushi wiki page. So again, this is a super simple uh, demonstration of how it can be used, but really this should show you the, the dynamic nature of how a global inbox can increase your flexibility. Not only could we quickly go in and update this element, add new content to it, add additional HTML to it, but this is just one element. We could manipulate multiple elements on the page all within that same script. So really flexible, uh, really awesome approach. If you're doing a lot of testing on a lot of different pages, I highly recommend looking at a global inbox strategy to increase your flexibility around your testing and really uh, take your optimization practice to a whole nother level.